So let's talk about how we test our code. Um, a framework for testing code is called unit testing. And there are libraries, in this case for Java, it's JUnit. And there are other libraries, one for Python and one for C, that allow you to test your code. So um, you should have at this point looked at assertions, the unit on assertions, and then also the, um, the module on debugging. And I, in, in this case, I want to look at how we use an existing li library to do unit testing. We're going to configure Eclipse to work with these unit tests. So imagine that you have um, a camera, and that is your device under test. Now, it's not uncommon to have this set up. That is the unit that we're testing but we'd like to be able to test exclusively this one element to see how it's working. So you may have um, this camera set up so that you're driving it. You may say it, have it zoom in, zoom out, focus, change colors, filter, um, and then you may do want to do some analysis. So you have inputs and you have expected outputs with a device that's going to be under test. So that's really common of unit testing. So in order to do this, I'm going to use something that we've seen in another part of this class. There are different, inner, there are different implementations of a stack. Um, there's an array-based stack, there's a linked list-based stack, and what I'm going to do is go to this link here to download um, a stack. And then we're going to import those three files and, and then use that for testing. So clicking on that link should take you to this drive where it says unit test me. And so what I want you to do is once you're there, um, I want you to just simply go here and download those files and import them. Um, and then once they're imported, we're going to use them to do our unit tests. So I have this file called testme.zip, and what you should be able to do is import that into Eclipse. And so if you go to File and Import, right, and then um, using the Import Wizard, take that, um, that link and take it as an existing project into your current workspace, which means you've already create it, um, a workspace. And since it is an archive, it's a zip. So we're going to go ahead and do um, import that zip file into our existing workspace. So let's see what that looks like now. If we go over to Eclipse and let's go here and let's say um, file, import and it's an existing project. And you have a choice either to take it, like if we just simply had a file that wasn't an archive, we would go to the root directory. Otherwise, we go in and select that particular archive file. So let's go and find that file that we just were able to grab. Um, and it's here under downloads. So I'm going to go to that directory and take testme.zip and open it up. And it looks like it has found it. And I'm going to make sure everything here is selected. And I'll hit finish. And we should get a couple of different implementations. So down here, I see something that says unit test me, and there is an array uh, based stack implementation. Let me double click that, and that should come up. And then there's a list based or st uh, node based stack implementation. And the difference between those is every time I do, for example, a push with the stack implementation, 
a new node will get created. The item gets um, placed into that node. And then um, and that node is placed to the, be in, uh, to the front at the very beginning of a stack. So we're using this linked list to model the functionality of a stack. So whenever I do a push, um, that item will get placed in. Another push will go from Joe to Tom to Fred. Um, so that's what we're doing with this right here. And when I want to pop it, we'll remove that particular item. So let's, in this case, I'm going to remove a few things to simplify this. And I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to call this stack just simply S. And I'll push Joe, Tom, Fred. And then I'll have that stack printed out. And, um, and let's do one more thing. I'll go ahead and do a pop, but then also print what's popped. So you should see that there's Joe. And on top of Joe will be Tom. And on top of Tom will be Fred. When I do a pop, the first one that comes out should be a Joe. So let's run this code. And you'll see that there's Joe, Tom, Fred. And then Fred is the first one to come out. It did show that, that there was a constructor call. And it's because in my constructor, I simply said the no argument um, constructor, right? We pass no arguments to this constructor. So that just simply shows that that constructor method was called. If I comment that out, it just runs with pushing Joe, Tom, and Fred. And when it does a pop, it pops Fred. And if I were to print out what it looks like after that, the entire stack, it'll just show Joe and Tom. So we have an array-based stack and a list-based stack that we can test. Um, we have some instructions on how to get our IDE configured to do unit tests. So I'm going to follow this. We're going to create some different um, test cases. And in this case, this one was using unit test three or unit test four. Um, yours or ours may be different with newer versions of JUnit. Um, but let's step through it and so you'll get a chance to see what that looks like. So I have this project set up, right? And there's an array-based stack, a, a, a linked list-based stack. And um, I want to test this code. Now, think about this. If you had a game, let's say you have an online multiplayer game, League of Legends, and you have thousands upon thousands of people and you want to make um, updates to the code. How do you test your code to, to, to determine whether or not you might have broken it or built in some type of bug? Well, once you have your code, um, ideally, you run it through quality control or a set of test cases that says it continues to work as expected. So I like to think of a unit test as a means of hitting your code with different inputs with known outputs. And as you come back a year, two years, or five years from now, make modifications, you run it through the unit tests, and it'll give you some confidence that the code works as expected. Um, so how do we do that? So I, I, now the unit test is something separate from your code. It's a separate device that's used to beat up your code, to run inputs, and then to look at outputs. So if I want to set up a unit test, this time when I go in, I'm going to go ahead and um, select create JUnit test case. So what does that look like when we run this? Um, when I say run, run as a JUnit test, you'll see that it will attempt to run it and test pop, test push, test size, and test is empty. All of those showed up as failures because by default, um, we've not implemented anything. So 
those are just placeholders. Now, if I want to click on each one of those tests, it says test push, and it shows you that it failed at line 14, and the method that it shows is not yet imp uh, not yet implemented. If I do a test is empty to look at that and where it failed, this pulls up the unit test that was run for that, and it says at line number nine that one failed. So I need to put code in here that tests those methods to see if they work as expected. So how should it work? Well, I know that if I were to create a new instance of a stack, oops, if I create an instance of a stack and then I do a push, a push and a push, and I think this is a, yeah, let's go ahead and work with the stack of integers. I know that um, if this is successful, I want to assert that the values that I've pushed are the values that I would expect to come out. So um, at its basic, most fundamental, you know, um, model, right, assertions, or, or, um, or unit tests are simply ways of putting a value in and then asserting that it is what you expect it to be. So let's do that now. I'm going to say that what I expect um, is when I do my pop, for example, I expect that number to be a... Um, Let's say the first one I pushed on was a 140, and I'm looking to see if when I do a number, uh, when I ultimately I want to see if that 140 um, is is in there. Did I push it in there successfully? So I'm going to say I'm expecting 140, and what I'll do is I will do a few pops. So there's the first one. And let's that that one should be a 265. That one should be a 230. And then this one here should be the 140. So when I run this, I'm going to assert equals, and I'll use the code completion of Eclipse control space. And I'll say I'm expecting uh, my two integer values to be the same. So what's expected is my 140, and I'll say my nums.pop, right? So what's here should be my um, 140. So at its core, this is what you're getting from your unit tests. You're doing an assert, and it will determine whether or not um, the failures that we see up here. Right now, is, we see that there are four failures. Let's run it and see if that changes. So run as a unit test. And we'll, there we go. Instead of four failures, we have three. So it looks like we can see that there's a check mark here, and it looks like the push works. Now, it means that these two values in line 22 are the same. So if I were to com comment out maybe one of these pops, these two values should not be the same. So let's run that again. I can probably more easily run it from here, rerun the test. And I think in this case, you should see that there will show up four failures. Um, so now, it's a test that you get to create up and you get to make. Um, you know, does it work or, or does it not? It is your responsibility to make up a successful test. Now, there is a way that you can get all of these to not fail is if you just simply assert that 
maybe one equals one. And when you run the test again, um, instead of four failures, now you only have two. But the problem with this is um, if this is your code or if you're being paid to do the testing, you're not really completing the test. So we're not looking to pass the test. We're looking to create a useful test. So for size, you're going to have to come up with something else. You don't want to simply assert that, um, that 1 is equal to 1 or 5 is equal to 5. Right? We want to actually find a reasonable way of, of testing the size method. So it may look something like this, where we push um, some number of elements onto a stack, and we say that we expect the size to be equal to 1, 2, and 3, since we push three elements on there. And then we can assert that instead of nums.pop, it's going to be nums dot and it's going to be size. And so if this test passes, let's run this. Um, let's run it from here. And so now we have our push test passing and our test and our, um, our size test looks like it's working. Now, in a more complex system, um, you could see the benefit of, of testing your assumptions about what goes in and what goes out to make sure that it works. Now, note that we could also do something like this. I pushed one item in, and I may want to assert that the size is equal to one at that point. And then I push another item in, and I may want to assert that the size is equal to two. And let's rerun the test and make sure that all of those assertions, so in this case, it's working with multiple assertions, and it looks like our size is still working. Now, if at in line 29, if I were to put in a six here, that assert should fail. Um, let's go maybe instead to line 32 and put in a size of 6. And if we run the test here, then since all three, if there's any one assertion that fails, then um, test size should fail. And if I click on test size, it will jump to that line of code where it failed. And what it says is that... Um, it failed at line 32, and that makes sense. We're at line 32, and it says, what was expected was a six. That's the number on the left, but what was actually in there was two. So the size was actually two. So this does have useful information when we do our failure tracing. Now, you have to design a useful test for your code um, in order for your product or for your project to continue to be successful. Um, so the mark of a good software engineer is not only creating the code, but also they have the ability to test the code. So these assertions that are in here, um, if I do this ASSERT control space, I can assert um, to see if two different collections are equal, maybe an array list and another array list, or a map right, and another map. Um, I can assert if two arrays are equal, and these could be arrays of characters, doubles, floating points, integers, um, arrays of objects. Um, I could test to see if an assertion is thrown, um, and if, if it's thrown and if it's caught. I can, you know, there. this list goes on and on and on as far as the, the number of different um, assertion um, 
that we see here. We can if, if like we can check to see if there's a boolean if two values are equal or not equal. So it's either they're equal or it's not equal. Whatever is expected, you can go ahead and test those assumptions. Um, you can test based on a duration. Did the code spend too much time in a certain area? Um, and so forth. So that essentially is, a, is what a unit test does for you. It provides a separate framework 